Yeah, okay. Is it good? good rate? Really good people, and they had a really good rate. They, they were very, very fair. Yeah. 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 yeah, we used to go over here a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Town and country was really good. Know. We've taken dogs and cats there. They were equally good with both. Not so expensive. No, not expensive at all. They were very fair for well, us. That's what we need to get away from. How would cost that for a grown up to go? Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. Well, I just learned if you get insurance or something for your dog. You, you can. can. <laughs> you actually can. <laughs> what? They got insurance for dogs. Yes. They have health insurance yes. for pets now. You can even yes. get it for cats. Horses. You can get health insurance for your pets. You can get really? For horses? horses? Sure. Yep. You can get health insurance for your pet, your horses, all that stuff. Yeah. Okay, with that, let's go to 379. <laughs> <laughs> I actually worked for an employer that had it on my major medical plan. Oh, yeah? You got people dying in the country, man, and they're like, let's get take care of the dogs. Yeah. <laughs> let's take care of the cats and the dogs. Yeah, no, so. Did you say 379? <laughs> yes. There is a fountain. Thank you for the good service we had this morning. Yes, Lord. Lord, I thank you for moms. Uh, thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to talk to my mom this afternoon. And Amen. I know they're going through a lot, and I just pray that you help them. And uh, help us tonight now.
just to put aside the, the thoughts and the, the weights of this world, let us focus on your word wholly and completely this, this evening, Lord, that it would make an impact in our lives and uh, help pastor fill them from on high. And the uh, Lord, just help us to serve you faithfully, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Go ahead, girls. Don't sit down. <laughs> up on that. She wants to sing one thing, you want to sing another. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I like when you're playing and you guys start fighting with each other while you're playing.
you tell yourself there's just no need to try? Well, consider how good God's been. He's been faithful time and again. You must believe and here's the reason why. With all the many miracles, why don't you think it's possible? With all the many things we've seen, why do you think it's just a dream? With all the things he's done for us, don't you think it's time?
man. I love being Bible believers. Amen. Amen. I got to tell you, we get into a church service, we don't even know what we're doing before we start. Yeah. <laughs> I get with Wendell like five minutes before. We don't, we don't play it in there. You got anything? No, I don't got anything. You got anything? No, I don't got anything. I go over to my wife. I got anything? <laughs> I start going around a congregation asking. <laughs> yep. And then there's these guys, you know, they don't have anything else. And they got these great programs and right. laid out and everything. And I'm like, you guys do that? <laughs> Come on. <man. laughs> They're like, what do you guys do? Well, we just take the Bible out. We just do things. Everything else just falls into place afterwards. Amen. We're just worried about that. That's right. You know? Yep. <laughs> I, I, people come in and like, you got business meetings? No, we don't want any of that stuff, man. Bills get paid. We just go, you know, we're worried about the Bible. Amen. You know? That's right. <laughs> Amen. So uh, we're going to be in chapter uh, 6 tonight, Esther uh, chapter 6. It's going to be Esther chapter 6 tonight. Now, um, Esther's a book. Where we're going to be, where you're dealing with um, the th first three and a half years of tribulation, okay? And you're starting to see how this is developing. I mean, I was reading the commentary uh, a little while ago, and a guy said, uh, um, "Oh, is a picture of uh, of of Christ." I said, well, "Are you kidding me? You think <laughs> uh, uh, this king of uh, Persia, uh, this king of Persia, is going to be a picture of Christ?" I said, "You got to be kidding me." I, and I realized, uh, look, this is my first year really catching a hold of this. I read somebody else's stuff, and I read it like, you know, you read somebody else's stuff, you listen to somebody else's stuff, and um, and what happens is uh, you get into the mix of somebody else's stuff. Mm -hmm. that, that's, an, that's a truth about the Bible. We have some prejudices. Uh, uh, I guess uh, this week I was talking to a guy, and we were talking about uh, some of the things in the Bible. I said, look, I, as long as Jesus is the Christ... And uh, the King James is the Bible. We can get a, we can get a lot of places from right. that. Right. Amen. Okay? Uh, but don't make a doctrine out of something you can't totally go, this is what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because it, you'll find out it's, it's you know, I, there's no gaps that are going to uh, separate us. There's no fallen angels that, are gonna separate, that should separate us. Uh, what should separate us is when somebody says you could like lose your salvation right. or uh, being baptized in water is going to uh, put you in the bride of Christ or uh, something in those terms, uh, things like that. Or um, uh, there are certain things that, wait a second, no, we're not going that far. There's walls that have got to be built up yep. on those things, and those walls are built up because we got a Bible in front of us. And this... Uh, the first three years, Vashti, the Gentile bride, goes away. She goes away. She has to be put out of the way. And then the Jewish bride, Esther, marries up with uh, Ohasuerus, uh, who was a picture of the Antichrist. Mm. And that's going to happen in the first three years. I mean, you think about it. Whoever brings, what if, uh, Israel has been asking for for the last uh, how many years is peace? Mm -hmm. When there is no peace, they're going to yell peace. What happens when somebody brings them a temporary peace? Mm -hmm. They're going to dive into it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when somebody comes along and, and gives them, a, a, a answers the question of Islam, mm. come on, a Jewish person, yeah. you think they're not going to fall for it? They're going to fall for it. Uh, the Bible says that a, a house divided against itself cannot fall. I mean, cannot stand. Excuse me. Opposites. <laughs> A uh, house divided by itself cannot stand. Satan's house is a divided house. He tells you that yeah. in the Bible. That's He's right. got two major religions right in his house right now. What's that? He's got Islam and Roman Catholicism. Amen. That's right. Yep. One's going to swallow up the other in the end. He's got to kick one away. Mm -hmm. Guess which one's going to be? Yeah. It's going to be Islam in the end. And whoever is that one is that, that solves that question, you might as well just stamp him. He's the one. Right. But they'll look at him as he's uh, as he's he's the greatest thing there is, because he brought it around. And you don't think people will worship? They'll worship anything if you give them a, a good idea to do it. Oh yeah, amen. So uh, um, we found out uh, last week uh, uh, Haman uh, started to build those gallows up. He started to build gallows up, and uh, um, we have to start with chapter six. Got to start in verse number fourteen of last chapter. 
It's one of them ones that's going to continue. Uh, you'll notice that there's a paragraph separator in 14, right? The next one is in verse number 4. So that means when he wrote it, that, first, that, that separator, it contained uh, 14 in, 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 uh, next to that verse number 1. Remember, they didn't have those numbers and stuff. And uh, there's a reason all that happened. God knows exactly what he's doing. So we're going to start with verse number 14, and then we're going to go forward. And the Bible says in uh, verse number 14 of, uh, of chapter 5, it says, Then said uh, Zeresh, his wife, and all his friends unto him, Let a gallows be made of 50 cubits high. That's pretty high. That's about 75 feet, right? Yeah. Okay, so uh, he says, Let a gallows be made of 50 cubits high, and tomorrow speak thou unto the king that Mordecai may be hanged thereon. <laughs> then go thou and merrily with the king unto the banquet. And the thing pleased Haman, and he caused the gallows to be made. Then uh, here it comes, On that night could not the king sleep. And he commanded to bring the book of the records of the chronicles, and they were read before the king. And it was found written that Mordecai had uh, told Bigthana and Teresh, uh, two of the king's chamberlains, the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hands on uh, the king Ahasuerus. And the king said, What honor and dignity hath been uh, done to Mordecai for this? Then said the king's servants that ministered unto him, uh, there is nothing done for him. Mm. There is nothing done for him. Oh, Father, we uh, thank you, Lord God, for night service. Thank you for the mothers, Lord Father. We thank you that, uh, Lord God, I, I got to say, the people in this room, we had good moms. Yeah, You can see this, we had some good moms. And Lord, and I thank you for them, and I thank you, Lord God, for the mothers of our church, Lord Father, and I thank you uh, for a good crowd this morning, Lord, a, a very uh, a very good crowd, Lord, with good attitudes this morning, Lord Father, and we thank you, Lord, we got a church, so we don't have to worry about gossip. Lord Father, I thank you for a church that we, uh, we don't have, we got from friendly people, Lord Father, and I thank you for them, Lord God, and I ask you to bless this word tonight, and bless the preaching, in Jesus' name, amen. So, um, uh, Remember, we got to keep in the back of our mind what his wife said. Zeresh and her friends, they said, why don't you make a gallows? Mm -hmm. Remember whose idea this was. Oh. It was Zeresh and her, it was his wife and friends, okay? They all agreed with his wife. Okay, we've got to remember that. It's going to mean something. Okay, so uh, on that night, it says, on that night could not the king uh, sleep. He, he's obviously got insomnia here, or some type of insomnia, and there's a reason for it. Go to... Um, uh, Psalm 127, Psalm 127. Psalm 127, uh, Watch this. This is always taught. It says in verse number two, it is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat bread of sorrows. Why? For so he giveth his beloved sleep. Now, if you're the beloved, God gives you sleep, right? Anybody here ever been up all night and you're like, what am I up all night for? I can't understand. I mean, without a chemical problem or whatever, uh, me, I have a problem. If I drink a little bit of coffee and even in the afternoon, I'm up for a while. I don't know what it is. I'm just up, okay? And uh, But there's once in a while, I can't sleep. I just can't sleep. And, and I got to tell you something. There's a lot of the business of the day uh, that I can't sleep. There's sometimes, it says, for the beloved, uh, for he giveth sleep. He giveth sleep, uh, giveth his beloved sleep. Okay, and that means something. He, if he's the one that giveth you sleep, uh, one thing the Lord gives you is a peace of mind. Yep. Anybody that says uh, uh, they're not, uh, they got uh, schizophrenia or something like that, every, first of all, every born again Christian's got it. Wow, you got one party that's saying, I like that, and the other part saying, don't take that. Yeah. Don't touch that. You got a flesh and you got a, a spirit inside of you, and they keep fighting after each other. It's it's no different than the cartoon, okay? So you do have that in you, but we're talking about when somebody says they got this, uh, they got struggles inside and they're restless and all this. Uh, God giveth the man peace. Mm -hmm. You're gonna wait on the Lord. 
Uh, he giveth his beloved sleep. What happens if you're up all night? And just so you know, this thing said what? It's vain to be like that. You can't get away from it. It's going to keep coming and coming back. He goes, why? Because he giveth his beloved sleep. That makes you think when you're up at night and you have no reason and there's just maybe something wrong, I always say the best thing to do is pray. Yep. Amen. Why? What, what happened to the disciples when they prayed? When they asked him to pray, they go to sleep. Yep. Why? He says, he told them it was what? The, the, the spirit is willing, but the flesh, the flesh is weak. The flesh is weak. So the, it takes a lot of the flesh to actually fight against spirit. It takes a lot. They want flesh just wants to go to sleep as soon as something spiritual happens. Yeah. Go to Ecclesiastes. Uh, go to Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. And uh, look down and uh, it says, uh, Keep thy foot when thou uh, goest to the house of God and be re more ready to hear uh, than to give, a sacrifice, give the sacrifice of fools, for they consider not that they do evil. Be not rash uh, with thy mouth and let, thine heart, uh, let not thine heart be hasty to do what to utter anything uh, before God. For God is in heaven and, and thou upon the earth. Therefore, uh, let thy words be what? Be few. Let thy words uh, be few. And you say, what does that have to do? Well, it's going to have to do with a lot because uh, a lot of times what we do is um, uh, we talk too much. Amen. Yeah. yeah. We talk too much. You know what that Bible says about your tongue? It says your biggest enemy. Mm -hmm. Do you ever say so many things and then all of a sudden that's all you can think about all night? Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have said that, you know. Uh, I should, and, and, uh, and you can't get it out of your mind. Uh, did you ever... Um, did you ever change the course of your history because of your mouth? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. Preachers do it a lot. Why? Yeah. Uh, you don't think we slip up? We got touchy people. Yeah. There's touchy people, man. I just don't like what you have to say. I just don't like you. I'm sorry. I can't. You know, some things it's just, hey, look, I got to tell you, I'm stupid. What can I tell you? Hey, I, I, I say it like this. My name, my name rhymes with what I am. Yeah. I'm Kirk the Jerk. Okay, good enough. Don't bother me now. I already told you you can't you can't pick on me now. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, <laughs> Kirk the jerk. Yeah, uh, don't be bothered. Well, he's a jerk. Well, yes, he is. He already told you that. Okay, that's my fault. So uh, sometimes you get you get uh, you can't sleep because of the things either that you've said in time or or there's also reasons of uh, uh, things that you you've done or or let's face it there's things you haven't done right there's things you haven't done uh, how many uh, couples married couples have gotten in a, a fight and tried to go to bed uh, in a fight Amen. let me ask you how you sleep right oh no preacher that's not us oh yeah it is Sure it is. Why? Because what do you think? I don't do it too? Okay. If, uh, if it's happening to me, it's most likely it's happened to all of us. But he couldn't sleep that night. Why? There was some. There was an open book somewhere. Mm -hmm. There's an accounting here that's not taken uh, part of it. It says, and he commanded to bring uh, the book of the records of the Chronicles, and uh, they were read uh, before the king. Now, if these are the Chronicles of that king. Now think about it. This is a this is a guy who wanted to take on the Greeks, right? This is a guy who wanted to go on a long campaign and fight battles. Uh, this is a guy who's probably got a pretty big head, huh? Mm -hmm. So if he's going to listen to the things of the Chronicles of the Kings, what do you think he's actually listening for? I mean, I understand he ain't got light, the late night infomercials to watch, so he's got to figure out something to watch. Uh, he, what's he going to do? He's going to get them to come in. Let me get a. Let me get them to read a book to me. Yep. And uh, the book I want you to read is my accomplishments. Yep. Uh, maybe that'll make me feel. I can't sleep. So why don't you come in here and read about how good I am? They're his. Hey, look, people. Uh, the the every war that you read about was written by the victor. Yeah. Just read it. and You can figure that out. I mean, nobody writes a, they don't get the loser to write a, look, at, you know what the, the sayings that the losers made? It's not whether you win or lose, it's how you play the game. Yeah. Right. A guy who lost wrote that. Why? Because the other guy who won, he's going around high-fiving. 
Yep. <laughs> it's as easy as that. <laughs> That's exactly who says those things. Um, uh, because the victors have always been the writers of history. So this guy is a victor. It's the Persian government. And he says, what? Let, read what, how great I am to me. Okay? Now, you have to understand something. I understand this, that even though he's thinking one way, the Lord, who is not mentioned in this book, is still thinking another. Mm -hmm. He's making sure the records are going to get in there. So it says, and it was found written. It was found written that Mordecai had told of Bigthana and Teresh, two of the king's chamber uh, lens, the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hands on King Ahasuerus. If you remember back in Esther 2, uh, it's uh, verses 21, um, 20, 22 and 23, it talks about these two men who tried to, assassins who tried to kill uh, Ahasuerus, Okay. And they were, they were found out, okay? They were found out. Now, this is the way that's written. Uh, God wants to show you something here. You got Mordecai, and he is found written in. And there's Big Thana and Terrace. You know what they are? They're found out. Yep. Somebody's found in, and somebody is found out. I, I got to ask you something. That's, a, that's kind of a picture of what you have at the great white uh, uh, at the great white throne kind of thing, uh, you're found in. Right. Guess what? There's a whole God, a whole whole lot of people. And guess what? They're going to be done. They're going to be yeah. found out. Amen. They're going to be found out. I'd rather be found in. Amen. Okay. So here's uh here's these uh, men, and 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 be sure your sin's going to find you out. That's right. Okay. These uh, any person that's out there. And uh, these guys were, were found out, and he's, and he's uh, you have to realize something. And the king said, look in verse 3, and the king said, What honor and dignity hath been done to Mordecai for this? Okay, what's been done for him? Now, you have to think like the king. What he realizes here to himself is he must be really successful. You say, why? Well, he found the assassination out before it happened. Right. Somebody can, somebody, somebody must like me. Why? They told me before it happened. Uh, that's what, that's how he's thinking. I must be pretty successful because somebody told me before anybody came in and tried to kill me. Somebody told me. Um, I, I guess if there, this is, this is a, this was a, a an unsuccessful king, nobody would have cared, would they? Right. right. Nobody would have told him. Why? They hated him. <laughs> So he says, uh, he turns around and he says, uh, there has to be somebody, I've got to reward somebody for this. I didn't get killed. And they find out, it says, uh, what has been done to Mord for Mordecai for this? Uh, then the king's servants that ministered unto said, there is nothing uh, done uh, for him. Mm -hmm. Now, you have to understand something. You know, people need to be rewarded. Yeah. People need to be rewarded. That's okay. Right. Uh, when... You know, we have a habit of beating people up, and Baptists love beating people up. Yep. Okay, you love banging them down, keep them down, keep them down. You're no good, you're no good, you're no good. Look, man, uh, you got to tell people, you got to tell, if you know, you tell somebody they're a loser all the time, they're going to be a loser. Right. They are. Don't go around telling people losers all the time. It's good to be uh, have constructive criticism, but you got to turn around and say, man, you're doing good. Yeah, that's right. You know, a person, who, a person who's critical all the time, guess what, man, they have a dirty heart. A person who is critical. You ever you ever see them, the critics? They're all over the church house. The critics, they got the, well, you know, everything's great. I just didn't like this, you know. And I don't, they pick out all the pieces that, yeah. that, 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 that that's no good. You know, Jesus turned around and said, you're finding all the, you, you, what are you trying to do? You look for splinters. You need to pull that mode out of your own eye. Right. And that's how we are. We kind of get critical. Uh, uh, you know, uh, they they have the the. the Whoever's in the church, uh, if you're trying to serve, believe me, uh, I'm going to tell you something. You're sometimes your Monday night's dinner. Yeah. You know the pastor's wife is money is, is Sunday and Monday night's dinner. A lot people like to roast them. Mm -hmm. uh, let me roast the pastor. Hey, look, when somebody does it, you know what that Bible actually says? You take no railing accusation against any preacher. Mm -hmm. When somebody brings up a railing accusation against Dewey Stewart or somebody even brings it up against anybody, I put them right there on the spot. You better bring up proof. Yep. And if you ain't got proof, I put it right to them. You're the problem. You are the problem. Amen. What have you ever done? That's right. You ever think what it takes to get up there after a while? 
day in and day out. And day, hey, how about this one? Uh, why don't you ask a Why don't you ask a preacher who he he said uh, one month got a crowd, next month got nothing. That's yeah. Right. How do you, How do you think he feels? You don't have to tell him what. You don't have to go about saying it. I watched the guy over the over the desk of uh, of my best friend one day, telling him he ran everybody out of the place, mm. and he was screaming and yelling at him. And I walked in. I said, "Well, the preacher can't be a brawler, but I ain't brawled anybody yet, and I've been I've been hoping that you'd stay here for a little while." Mm. I'm not the preacher. Amen. I'll protect that preacher. Yep. Come on. I'll protect him. Why? You don't take a railing accusation against him. Yep. Amen. You better have some... Hey, look. Is he God's man? That's right. Go take it to him. You ever notice in the Bible, there's some guys in the in the Bible that, that, that uh, did some hard things and God was sitting there going, I don't see nothing. What do you got? What do you got? What's the matter with you? You think about it. What did God do? God actually protected his men. Mm-hmm. You know, he protected his men. How many times do you think he protected David? Yeah. And here David was. He, he went with Bathsheba and he said, he not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna kill him. I'm not gonna kill him. Why? It's gonna be harder for him to live with it. Right. He'll go through living with it. But you know something? He didn't want to unstabilize the nation of Israel. He didn't want to unstabilize the nation of Israel. And he felt for the people. Now it says in verse number four. In verse number four, we've got to, well, he's going to restore order a bit here. And it says, and the king said, uh, who was in the court? Mm-hmm. Who was in the court? Uh, Haman uh, was coming the outward court of the king's house to speak unto uh, uh, the king to do what? To hang Mordecai. He's coming in to hang Mordecai. He doesn't even know. It. He's got one thing on his mind, and, and it's already the cat's out of the bag. Yeah. Okay? The cat's out of the bag, and here he here it comes. He wants to hang Mordecai on those gallows that he had uh, that he had prepared for him. And the king's servant said unto him, Behold, Haman standeth in the court. Haman's out there, they told him. And the king said, Let him come in. Let bring all Haman in here. Okay? Uh, I, I, let me show you something for that part, uh, who's in the court and all that. And it says, go to Proverbs chapter 11. I use this uh, verse a, a lot lately because I've just happened to get some good guys in. <laughs> Uh, verse number 14, he, he, he starts to talk to his people, and in verse number 14 it says, uh, where no counsel is, the people fall, right? Mm-hmm. But like, watch, it says, but in the multitude of counselors, there's what? Safety. There's safety, okay? So uh, the king turns around, and he starts looking around, who's in the court, and he starts asking his servants, and, and his servants start, well, you know, they're looking for the big one of the big guys, one of the directors, yeah, there's, uh, there's Amon, oh yeah, there's Amon, bring him in here. Okay, in the multitude of counselors, there is a, a safety. Now, that's not, this is how people read that. They think they should go around and ask everybody. Yeah. They, oh, let me go around the church and ask everybody, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? You know what you are? You're just going around being a tail bearer. Mm-hmm. A, a, multiple of, a multitude of counselors is like this. Uh, a president has a cabinet. Yep. So you got the commerce guy over here. He wants to know about commerce. He has this guy over here. He wants to know. They're your counselors. Right. Okay, in the church house, you got your elders. You say, well, we don't have any elders set up. Sure you do. You just didn't realize it yet. There's older guys in here. They've been through a lot. Just ask them. Okay? They're not. What do you think? They're, oh, let's get the place. Let's get the place to fall. Mm. They're not looking at that. They're looking at getting at the prosper. You ask people. Hey, man. That's right. Ask people in the church house. Hey, you know, he even t- you know what the problem I see a lot of times? Preachers go out and ask everybody on the street. Right. Well, what are you asking them for? It, what, did, what did Paul turn around and say, well, you're, you're better off asking the least esteemed in the church. Yeah. Well, at least he's spiritual. Okay. He says, if you can't go, go to the least guy. And uh, and the king's servant said uh, said unto him, he said, behold, Hammond stands in the court. Hammond's out here. And he says, bring him on in. Let him come in. So Hammond came in. You'll notice this is verse number six, the number mm-hmm. of a man. Yeah. So Haman, he comes in here. And uh, and the king said unto him, What shall uh, be done unto the man whom the king delighteth uh, to honor? Now, you'll notice something about this. Uh, the king spoke first. 
The right. king speaks first. Right. Okay, uh, just so you know, that doesn't happen today. Okay. The king doesn't get to speak first today. Everybody else wants to speak up. But these are days where, as you go further back in time, uh, if you go back to uh, the 1970s and all the media, even the news people, uh, before 1974, before the Brat Packs and all that stuff of the media, they actually let the man speak first. Yes. Uh, I, can, I can't imagine Walter Cronkite today trying to be a newsman. He'd never make it. Because he immediately spoke some facts. These guys speak nothing of facts, and they go right after the guy before they ever hear anything. It's guilty by accusation today and not guilty by substance of anything. Okay, so, um, so he brings him in, and Haman lets him speak first, because the king should be the first speaker here. Uh, he's the man that, that God honor. He says, uh, whom the king delighteth to honor. What should I do? What should be, shall be done? Now, Haman, now look at this. Now, Haman thought in his heart. There's a wrong place to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's the Bible say about your heart? It says it's, 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 it's to deceive you. It's despicable. Uh, it says nothing good about your heart in that Bible. Okay, and uh, he, he's thinking in his heart, uh, he's saying, you know what he's thinking? He's saying, look at me. Look at Hammond. Uh, what should I do for a man he delighted in? He's got to be talking about me. Yeah. That's exactly how Hammond's thinking. Yeah. Well, ha who, what, if I delighted in the man, what should I Well, he has to be delighting in me. You know, he, I gave him that big money donation. Well, he's got to be thinking about me. You know, I always said that, you know what, uh, uh, if you go to a, you go to a lot of, I go, I've been to some, some like Protestant churches, and there's one guy that always talk about him every week. Yeah. You know what, you know what his job is? Deacon. You know what, know why he's deacon? He gives the most money. The richest man in the Methodist church, yeah. the richest man in the Presbyterian church, oh, yeah. uh, he's, he, he's the, he's the one in charge. Right. He's in charge, like it or not. Um, that, that's, that, that's, that. You know, that's one of the reasons Jesus brought up the widow with the mites. Yes, sir. Why? Because there was a lot of guys that were giving money. And if you'll notice where Jesus is at the time, it says he walked up, he got against the treasury. Mm -hmm. And it says he was watching what was put in. Now, isn't that something? He's actually sitting there watching what people are putting in. Yep. And he turns around, he recognizes a woman putting in two mites. And he says, well, this woman gave it all. Mm. Well, she gave everything she got. What's that mean? Well, most people that most people got money, they don't give nothing. They don't give nothing. Come on. Just the way it is, people. That's right. They can give a big sum, but that doesn't mean they're giving any. They're not giving it all. Yeah, amen. So um, the king speaks first, and Haman gets to speak, and Haman's thinking. Haman's thinking in his heart. Uh, look at me. He even says, "To whom would the king delight to do honor more than who?" Me. That's, yeah, come on. He, he likes me. <laughs> That's how Hammond's thinking. And uh, and Hammond answered the king for... Now watch how he answers him. Uh, and Hammond answered the king for the man whom the king delighteth to honor. I know he's going to say me. I know he's going to say me. Uh, that's what he's thinking. It's going to happen. And, uh, and it says... Now this is what he's going to say. Let the royal apparel be brought... Which the king uses to wear. Bring the king's apparel. Bring the king's clothes in. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know what else? And the horse that the king rideth upon. And the crown royal which is set upon his head. <laughs> he's you know what he's telling them? He's telling them what he wants. Yep. I, I want to be looking like a king. I want to be treated like a king. I want to be presented like a king. That's what I want. Okay, and he tells him that that's the thing, and he says, and let this apparel, this horse, uh, be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princes, that they may array the man with, with all whom the king delighted to honor, and bring him on horseback through the street of the city, and proclaim before him, thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighteth to honor. Uh, he wants the people, he wants the king's servants and all the other princes. I'm talking about all the big guys. Yeah, come on. I'm talking about, look, I, I don't want that. You know that guy who comes in before the pre president and he yells out, I don't know what, he's a sergeant of arms or something like that, yeah. and he yells, the president of the United States. And, he, and then the president comes out with the uh, hail to the chief. Um, this is what Haman wants. Yeah. He thinks that's what he deserves exactly the same treatment as the king. Okay? 
So Haman's asking for that. Oh man, wow. I, I want to be I want to be exalted like the king here. So he that's what he's gonna lay out, and he lays out the desires of the man's heart. Yeah. Okay? You know, um I, I don't know about you, but I've read some uh I've read some uh um uh, some psalms and it tells you it says uh, if the lord delighteth in you and all these other it'll say things like that and it says that god will give you the desires of your heart so everybody thinks that uh god uh god if you love in the lord you're going to get the desires of your heart and they think like they're thinking in their head well he'll give me a nintendo or something well you know god's going to give me corvette because he's going to give me the desires of my heart uh, I've had people say, I want that woman over there. I know God will give them to me because he'll give me the desires of my heart. But they didn't read the first part of the, the verse that right. says that uh, you're in delighting in the Lord. Uh, if you're doing what the Lord wants and you're uh, thinking like the Lord, the desires of your heart are going to change. Yeah, that's right. They're going to change. Hey, look, uh, it's like asking an, a, a person who's an 80-year-old 80 year, an 80 year old Christian uh, turn around and say, uh, what do you want? And uh, there's going to be a difference between an 80-year-old person that's going to say that's saved and, and a 20-year-old. Yeah. A 20-year-old figures, I got the rest of my life. Give me riches and honor. An 80-year-old is sitting there saying, well, you know, I want to be better with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they know the time's starting to tick. Right. right. You see? That's the difference in the church house is, the, is that the desires of the heart change. But this guy, uh, he wants to be exalted like a king yep. and he wants to be placed up like a king. And I could only think of uh, one thing that he sounded like and he sounded like a guy who said, I will ascend. Yep, that's Amen. right. Yeah. I will ascend uh, uh, into the heavens. And I will, I will uh, uh, ascend into the sides of the north and, and, and I will be like the Most High and I will also sit on the Mount of the Congregation. He sounded like that man. Yeah, he did. Who's that man? That's Lucifer. Yep, come on. I need to be exalted as high as the king and lead a rebellion against him in the end. And uh, this is what he says. This should happen to the man that delighteth uh, with honor. But, but watch what happens in verse number 10. Amen. It says, Then the king said unto said to Haman, Make haste and take apparel in the horse. And he's starting to go like this. Yeah, come on. And all of a sudden he says, And thou, uh, and, and thou hast said, and do, and do even so to Mordecai the Jew. Amen. Could you imagine Haman's face right now? Yes, he said. I mean, the table's just turned. It must have been awful pink. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you, what? Or white. Yeah, man. Yeah, he's like, he's like standing there, and and, uh, and he says, well, I want you to do all these things. And he says to who? Mordecai the Jew. Yep. That, and he says, that sitteth at the king's gate down there, and let, let nothing fail. Let nothing let fail. Nothing. All your heart's desire that you just gave me, do, do it to Mordecai the Jew. Don't let anything fail. And uh, what you have here is uh, where the tables are turned, and you have to understand something. Even with an evil king, even with an, a, an evil thing like that, God's children of God uh, will get honored. Yes, sir. God will make sure his kids, in some way, will get honored yep. in this. Uh, go to uh, a Psalm. Go to Psalm 37. Psalm 37. Uh, this is one of those. This is one of them psalms where you start to look at it, and, and you and, and and you can actually see the direction it's going right off the bat. Okay, he says he says, "Fret not thyself because of evil doers, neither, neither be uh, envious uh, against the workers of iniquity. Why? For they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb." Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Amen. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. You know, you got a new heart right there, you see? He says, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light. And thy judgment as the as the noonday, uh, the millennial. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. 
Fret not thyself because of, of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to path, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Eat for evil doers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, that's like wait like a waiter. Those who wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit uh, the earth. Go to verse 28. And this is why. That for the Lord, he loved judge, loveth judgment. For, wait a second. For the Lord loveth what? Hey, isn't that something that the whole world says, don't judge me? Yeah, come on. Yeah. And the Lord turns around and says, he loveth judgment. Yeah. I mean, uh, I was at, we were out when you said they turned around. I was with somebody and they turned, somebody, somebody got up and they said, you know, you have a very judgmental God. Yep. I said, yes. <laughs> Thank you. They said, I go, we don't have a judgmental God. I, guess I said, you got the wrong one. Right. right. I mean, what do you mean to have a, I said, hey, 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 dummy, didn't you see one of the books in the Bibles? It's called Judges. Yeah, come on. Didn't you ever notice that there's a judgment seat of Christ in the great white throne of what? Judgment. That's right, amen. He judged the quick and the dead. Yeah. Amen. He says, uh, it says there in 28 of 37, it says, For the Lord loveth judgment, and he and forsaketh what? Not his saints. They are preserved forever. But the seed of the wicked shall be what? Come yeah. on. Come on. Yeah. And you know what God says? He says, uh, I'm going to give it to them now. Right. right. You know, we're so worried about what this one has and what that one has. And, and you know what God says? Don't worry about what they have. Yeah. Why? They're not going to have it long. You, you know, an unsaved person, what you have to understand, there's some people out there that's just not going to get saved. Right. That's right. They're just not going to get saved. Uh, i got to tell you something. Uh, I've been reading that Bible long enough in, in Romans chapter 1, and I, I, I know people that don't even like what I have to say here, but uh, God says I gave them up. Yeah. He says the second time I gave them up. Right. And then there's a third time sitting there. He says, I gave them over. Mm -hmm. What's that mean? They ain't getting saved. That's right. I've given them the gospel twice, and they still, uh, I've given them as much as I, I, he's only required twice. That Bible says he only required twice, really, to have a testimony of somebody. Yeah, you would give them a lot more. I mean, I got to tell you, I was witness a lot more than twice. Yeah, amen. But, but God says once he speaks twice. He doesn't have to give them more than that. It's, it, it's you that's getting a good benefit uh, but because there's a bride out there. But there's some people God's speaking to, and then God says, I ain't talking to him no more. Right. I, I, I got to tell you, I think that's our governor. Yeah. I think God's done with him. Mm -hmm. And I think he's going to be a wicked man. Let him have his day. Why? He knows what's going to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He knows what's going to happen. Amen. There's some people out there, uh, they're, they are the child of wrath. Yep. They are definitely the child of wrath, and, and we see them, and they, they give up, to, they give themselves over, and they do incredibly evil things from that point on. And nothing's going to stop them. And they're violent about it. Yeah. You give them the gospel, and they re react in violence, saying you're judging them, and you're made, you're, you hate them. I haven't said one thing to hate you. Right. But that's how they see it. You see, they've been given over. And, um, and, and, and I think uh, uh, those, those people, God says, he says, look, he says, he turns around and he says, fret not against these people. Yeah, they got it all now. Hey, look, uh, um, uh, Cornelius Vanderbilt, he had it all here. Yeah. yeah. The man had it all here. And he was a pretty wicked man, wasn't he? Yep. Uh, guess what? You think he's got it over there? Mm -hmm. uh, how about Andrew Carnegie? At one time, $490 million. Richest man on the planet at one time. And, uh, and he believed in Darwin's theory of whatever yeah. it was, of hokey pokey. Come on. How do you think he's fared? Yeah. What do you think his millions are going to do for him? Do you think it's going to buy him a place? I've watched rich people actually stand, stand there as I witness to them and think they're going to buy their way in. Well, why would God bless me this much? Mm. And I'd look at them and I'd say, you ain't going to be blessed after. Yeah. Right. You better buy it all now and keep everything you got. Buy it now. Why? You got a hard day looking forward. Right. Got a hard day. Uh, one thing I, I always say, a, a Christian can look into the future. Uh, a lost man can only look at the past. Right. A Christian can look to the future. A lost man can only look to the past. Amen. Because he can't look to the future. Amen. Uh, and then it says in, uh, in verse number 11 down here, it says, then, uh, then took Haman the apparel. Now, how do you think Haman's taking the apparel? You think he, uh, it sounds like he's taking it pretty good, but I can tell you this, I don't think so. No. It says, then Haman, uh, he, 
he, then t took him and the apparel and the horse. And, and he arrayed Mordecai. Now this is the guy, he, he made a law to kill all the Jews uh, because of this one man. Because of this one man. And, and guess what? Now he's got to dress the man up. Right. Hey, in fact, he's going to have to dress this man up. He's going to have to walk around and tell how great the guy is yep. in front of everybody. So how do you think he's, he's dealing with this? <laughs> he, he's, he's not dealing with it good. So then took him in the apparel and, and the horse and arrayed Mordecai and brought uh, him on horseback through the street of the city <laughs> and proclaimed before him. And now that's the thing you got to understand. He's not just proclaiming to the people. It says he's proclaiming before Mordecai like he's his servant. Right. Now that's even worse. This guy wouldn't, you're supposed to bow down to me. And now all of a sudden he's looking up at him and he's got to do it in front of him. Look at this man up here. He's the greatest thing there is. A uh, hail Mordecai. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and he's got to proclaim before him, thus shalt uh, it be done unto the man whom the king delighteth. Uh, to honor. Uh, I mean, imagine that one. And it says, and, um, and now watch in verse number 12. And Mordecai came again uh, to the king's gate. So he went back to his uh, civil servant job right here. Okay? Um, he... I mean, here's Haman. He's, uh, he's, he's wanted to rejoice over the evil, and he wants to mourn the good right here. I mean, but here we go. Uh, it's going to happen again. And here comes Mordecai. He goes just, Mordecai just takes it like, oh, well, you know, he goes back to his civil service job right here at the gate, letting people in. Okay, are you, uh, are you on the list? Are you, uh, uh, what's your job? Uh, what are you here for? Uh, what did you take in and what did you take out? You got to pay tax on it. He's the guy at the gate. Yep. So it says, but Haman, now look, but Haman hasted to his house doing what? Morning. Morning. So he, he wouldn't have a good feeling, did he? He went to the house morning, and when it's like morning, that's like somebody died. Yep. Yeah, more, Haman, it was you. Yeah, man. It was you, buddy. You died inside today. And he, and, but Haman hasted uh, to his house morning, now look, and having his head covered. Now this guy, Mordecai, goes back to his job. He doesn't go get it all puffed up. Right. Okay? But how does he go? The other guy, he, he gets, he, he's got to look at it. He goes in low. He's coming in low. And, and there's, a, there's a thing. You know, i got to tell you something. Haman, he's going to rejoice. People rejoice over evil. Yep. Oh, yeah. And they mourn over the good. Yep. Yeah. I mean, this was just a good thing. This guy, Mordecai, like it or not, this guy stopped an assassination of, uh, of the highest man in the land. Okay? And instead of uh, honoring him, because guess what? Hammond doesn't even realize he's only in a position because of that guy. Right. But he couldn't see that. The only thing he could see is the evil that he wanted to do. But you better believe he was rejoicing over the evil that he was putting together. And now he's mourning over the good that was happened. Hmm. Kind of sounds like the weird world that we're in today. Yeah, how about yeah. it? Yeah. The, the earth today is controlled. It's like an insane asylum that is that is being ruled by the inmates. Yep. Yeah, amen. That's what we look at today. If this was we're the worst tenants that could ever be on a planet. Right. Uh, rejecting the man that gives us the food of the planet, the beautifulness right. of the planet, and just treating him like he's nothing. Yeah, come on. He, he brings us, he gives us all this abundance of everything we got, and then he sends his, he send, comes down here as a man, sends his son as a man, and, and what do we do? We kill him. Yeah. We kill him. That's what man's about. That's what man's about. So, now watch what happens to Haman. Poor Haman. Oh, yeah. And uh, Haman told Zeresh, his wife. Remember Zeresh? We, this goes back to that chapter, back chapter 14. Zeresh is the one that said, you better build a gallows and, and we're going to put Mordecai on the gallows, right? And we're all going to cheer about it. Yay! Hurrah! Hurrah! Yeah. When Johnny comes more, when Haman comes marching home again. Yep, come on. Now watch what happens. And, and Haman told Zeresh, his wife and, and all his friends, everything that had befallen him. <laughs> then said his Wise men. Did you notice the difference? It says wise men there, huh? His wise men and Zeresh, his wife unto him. If Mordecai be of the seed of the Jews, before whom thou hast begun to fall, thou shalt not prevail against him, but 
shall surely fall uh, before him. Hmm. You got to understand something in the crowd of the wicked. In the crowd of the wicked, they leave when judgment comes. Yeah. In the crowd of the wicked, they leave when judgment comes. Uh, it's as easy as seeing this. Uh, they, they promote a man in the media. And uh, they promote him and they try and bring him up and bring him up. And then when he fails, they all psst, yep. disperse around him like he's never been there. Right. He, he's a good man until, the, uh, until it's found out. And then they all run from him. Right. They all run from him at that time. Uh, uh, how fast they flee, basically. How fast they flee when something uh, goes wrong and they're the first ones that say, Told you so. Yeah. Well, we told you this. They were the ones cheering them on. Right. You know what this is a picture of me? Did anybody ever read Numbers, Numbers 21, 22, and 23, 24? There's a man by the name of Balaam. Yeah. And Balaam comes around. You know what he says? He says, uh, uh, curse these people for me. Curse me these people, he says. And uh, he tells Balaam that. And Balaam's a picture of the false prophet. Mm -hmm. Now, the false prophet, what he's going to do is, in the, uh, to the, with the Antichrist, he's going he's to be preaching for him. And he's going to be uh, putting him up on high. But he's going to have to use this. He's going to have to use somewhat of this. And he's going to get to that part that says he's, he's going to get to try and get to a part that says what? I'm going to curse me the Jews. Yep. And, and you know what's going to happen? You ain't going to find it in the book. You go find me a place, Balaam, that I can curse me uh, these people. And Balaam goes back and he says, well, let me go see. I'm going to read my Bible a little, talk to the Lord a little. And he says, he comes back and says, you can't do it. It doesn't say it in there. I can't find a place where it says it in the book. So he says, uh, Balaam turns around and says, well, let's go to the back side. We'll see what they're doing. And they go to the other side. And they try to look at it in another lens. What's that like? That's like the, what the Lord does with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He says, well, let's look at it from over here. Yeah. Christ's life. So he's going to say, well, let's look at Israel over here. Ah, see that? See what they're doing? And what's God say in the book? Not, in a, not at this time. These people are my people now. Even during that time. That remnant is mine. So here's the picture of that where uh, judgment comes. And here he's saying, I need to curse me. They just put Mordecai up on high. Yep. Balaam, curse me, these people. And Balaam's like, I can't curse them. Hey, man, there's, hey, look, there's a whole a bunch of people right now. And uh, they're trying to curse the Jews right now, saying that we're a replacement for them. The church replaced the Jews. It's called replacement theology. Mm -hmm. And they're saying, we're going to march into Zion, and we're, gonna, we're not going to have a rapture before the tribulation. And they're going to march into Zion now. And uh, they're never going to get there. They're never going to get there. Yeah. Why? Uh, you can't curse me, them people. Amen. You couldn't curse them, those people. Why? They're the remnant. They're the remnant. And uh, here's, here's uh, uh, Haman, and he finds out, and all his friends turn around, and they say, uh, if, if he's been lifted up, surely you can't, you can't conquer him. Right? Uh, if God lifted him up first, you can't conquer him. And uh, verse number 14, And while they were yet talking with him, came the king's chamberlains, and hastened to bring unto the banquet uh, that Esther had prepared. So uh, Haman's now, uh, what, his goose is being cooked. Yep. Yeah. Hey, but see, he thinks he, I think Haman, because of his pride, he, he's pretty much, I haven't read further and studied it further, but maybe he thinks he's still got a shot. Yeah. Maybe there's a choice here. He thinks maybe still, I, I got a shot to do this. Why? Because that seems like what happens in the tribulation. Mm -hmm. I said, the devil always thinks he's got a shot somewhere. Mm -hmm. It seems as such as he goes on. He always thinks he's got a shot at it. I mean, uh, we've read the end of the book. We win. Hey, man. But he seems to always say he's got a shot at it. And his uh, way to do it is always to attack the Word of God. Yep. I mean, you have to think about this. And I, I, I never thought about it before. Um, New King James is never the New King James nor the NIV. I make sure I say it to people in here. The New King James or the NIV or any of those other funny books have not, have not changed the Bible. The Bible's still the same. Right. That's right. You know what they did? They made another book. Yep. Just because somebody's foolish enough to believe it Come on. doesn't mean it changed the book. Amen. Uh, when somebody, uh, uh, the evil men that I see, the evil men that I see are, are the men that actually use the King James and say it better renderings yeah, uh -huh. out of the same book that they're reading. They're the most dangerous men you'll ever see. Why? They're using God's book. And they're saying that they're God yep. over him and changing words in his book. Come on. It says in his book you can't add. It says in his book you can't subtract. But he, they got other books over here. 
are they the same book? No. And guess what? They don't have the same God right. in their book. Oh, yes, it's Jesus. No, it's got to be another one. Why? Because my Jesus didn't say that. Amen. That's what you have to understand. There is a, a, a worse spirit in their book. Well, and that's a like it or not thing. Yep. And when you, hey, look, I, people say it all the time. Uh, what were they using before uh, this book came out? Look, I'll give you the answer, people. Before there was ever anything written, about 2300 B.C. and beyond, what did they use then? You have to realize God never turned around and said, well, it's manuscript to manuscript. You know what he right. said? He said the word of God, the bread of life that did what? It came down from heaven. We've just been messing with it. Yep. But he said it came down from heaven. Amen. That's how it works. Yeah. And uh, you can actually go through the Bible and find out how it works. That's why it's called inspire. That's why it's called inhaling and exhaling. That's why it's called uh, inscriptions in script, scripture. That's why there's preservation after that once it's written down. And then there's translation. And you say, well, God does, God's in the business of translating? Oh, well, let me ask you something, Brother Larry. What, what language does God speak up there in heaven? I don't know. That's not something. You don't know. I can tell you this, he's more intelligent than we are. Yeah. So he sure isn't using the, he's got to actually come down to speak to you, come down levels to speak to you. And know what it is? You think you're more powerful than God. Yeah, come on. And you try to speak to him like he's unintelligent. Yeah. Think about that. When you're in your prayers, you still try to make yourself out sometimes to be look good. Yeah. Well, Lord, I was really thinking this, and there's God saying, "Yeah, I was at that incident. You weren't <laughs> thinking that." Right. <laughs> Come on. Amen. Amen. I think that's. Did you ever look at Ecclesiastes when it turns around and says you have a, you have a spirit in you, and it says, "And God taketh it back," yes. and it goes back to him. Did you ever think? And it says, "Now I, I'm going to show you a verse," and you're going to go, "Oh, I never saw it like that." Go to uh, 1 John chapter uh, 5. 1 John chapter 5. Now we know that the spirit of man goeth up. That's every man. Every man. And uh, he says he taketh it back where which he said it, right? Go to 1 John chapter 5. You see, it's hard to see verses. Sometimes you see them a little different. And, and it makes you think why they took it out of the book. Why other books don't have it in there. Look down and uh, we, we go and we look at verse number 7. And it says uh, 4. Now, let's go up one. It says, this is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only. Uh, that's his manifestation in the Old Testament. Water only, but by water and blood when he came in front of us. And he was seen, he was the manifested in the flesh. It says, um, it says, and it is the spirit that do what? Beareth witness. Beareth witness. Yeah. Because what? The spirit is truth. Now watch the verse 7. Why? For there are three that bear record. Where? In heaven. In heaven. We got one place covered. In heaven. Now, if you're bearing record, Miss Yvonne, the record is there, and you are the judge, and you say, this is what the record says, don't you? That means that somebody's going to be bearing the prosecution and the witness out there. Right. Not him. He's bearing the record. He's got the record in front of him. Okay? And that's the three. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are what? They're one. Now watch the next part. That covers heaven, right? That's what it says. And there are three that bear witness in where? The earth. Earth. That's a physical location, isn't it? Yeah, amen. So what do we got? We got two places covered and everything's covered now because you're only in one of those two places. Right. He says, I got a record up there and guess what? I got a record down there and I got something down there. They're going to bear witness down there. And look what it says. It says the Spirit. Now back up to, oh, back up to verse 6. It says, and it is the Spirit that beareth witness. Well, I got three witnesses. What's that? The spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three do what? They agree in one. Well, that tells you something. What's that? Well, Miss Yvonne goes up, goes up, and she's going to stand before God. He's just say he wants to question you. 
Just say he wants to. I know you're not going to lie because you got a perfect body, perfect mind. But just say you said you were, just say you were a lost man. And you were turned around and you were standing before God and he, and, and he turned around and he says, uh, oh, what about this? And you turn around and say, well, let me tell you about that, Lord. And you start giving this lie. Well, what happens when your spirit that was taken back mm -hmm. turns around and starts telling the truth? Amen. What's that? Your spirit is part of the Holy Spirit. He gave you that life that went into your body when you took that, when you got breathing and it, everything like that. It's right there and then bam. And it turns around and says, no, you weren't, you weren't there. Oh, no, no, you didn't think that. It makes you start to think what's really go, what's going on there. Your, your worst enemy is going to be your spirit. Yep. He's been there through the whole time. <clears throat> he went into your body when you first prayed and he left you. He, he's gone when you're done. Amen. He's in and out. He's the air that's there. That's what it says. And uh, when Jesus talked about it, and here we go, and he turns around and he says, there's three that bear witness. What's that? The spirit, the spirit, the blood. I don't cover you. Hey, man, miss me. Well, Lord, I, you shed your blood for me. Yeah, but you didn't apply it. Yeah, come on. The blood's going to bear witness against them, isn't it? And then he turns around and he says one more piece. What's that? Look what that says there. It says, and the what? The water, right? Mm -hmm. And these agree as one. Well, how can, what do you mean the water? Oh, okay. Well, I'll give it to you like this. Uh, the water is being the gospel. Right. The water of the word. And you turn around and you say, well, I never got the gospel. What do you mean you never got the gospel? The water's right here too. Sure you did. Sure you did. It's right here. And we gave you the gospel. Now that's why John turns around and he says later on, he says, and this is the record. Yeah. And this is the record. What's that? That God gave his, God hath given up to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. Isn't that something? What's, what's going back there with, uh, with Haman is, Haman, uh, Haman was trying to rise up, and he was trying to rise himself up, and the tables got turned on him. And now he's, he's seeing a downfall here, and what's the first thing is, even his wife turns around and says, hey, you're, you, your, goose, your goose is cooked, buddy. Yep. <laughs> when he sees they all start to scatter and run away, I don't want to be a part of this. Why? Why? They don't get hung too. Yeah, they don't want to get hung too. Yeah. <laughs> they don't want to yeah. be hanging on a tree too. You see, and, and that's what we're uh, that's what we're set up against right now. Is uh, is there somebody that's already got the record? And guess right. what? There's somebody that's going to be bearing witness. They're all yeah. going to know about it. And here's um, here's Mr. Heyman. And, and Mr. I bet you Mr. Heyman's going to try again. Amen. Come on. I bet you he's going to try again. And uh, no matter what, why? Because evil don't 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 want to lose that fast. Right. If you remember, the Bible says something about uh, it says something about the devil and the wicked one. It says that he was made without fear. Right. He was made without fear, and, and he's not the type that's going to back down over something little. Okay. This gives you a good lesson. But can now I, I want you to understand? Can you not see now how the Jews are married up with the Antichrist, mm -hmm. and how particular it's going to be to gain their confidence? to turn those last 42 months of that three and a half years right. into a mess, and that mess is going to be re almost redone in Job. 42 chapters with Job. Yep. And he's a picture of the last three and a half years of the tribulation. And you start to see it, and you go, why are these guys talking that there's only three and a half years? You don't get it. And you know why they don't get it? They're all looking for a new thing, and they're yeah. all trying to—they're all trying to put themselves up. Come on. What was wrong with what the old, what, what our forefathers said yet many years ago? They were right. They were right. They saw it. They were more spiritual than we are. We don't come up with any new thing. There's no new thing under the sun, people. Stop thinking there is. Right. Amen. Let's pray, Father. We thank you, Lord God, for uh, this story. We thank you, Lord God, for. Uh, for, for, for this book of Esther, Lord, is teaching us a lot, Lord. And, uh, Lord, I thank you that I, I don't even know what's going to happen next week. I get to study it next week, Lord Father. You open up the scriptures to us, Lord Father. We just thank you for these things. Lord, let us uh, Lord, let us not be a Haman. Let us not be a Haman, Lord Father. Let us not uh, think of ourselves better than we are, Lord Father, lifting ourselves up, trying to put our seat together, Lord Father. Uh, let the wicked have her time now. Lord Father, we're not going to fret not at them, Lord Father. We're going to trust in thee, Lord Father, and look towards the things of you in our lives. Thank you for this morning, Lord Father. We thank you for the people that came out. Thank you, Lord God, that we are here to serve them, Lord Father. 
here to serve them, Lord God, and here to serve those who come in. Uh, thank you for them coming in. Let us be uh, very uh, very nice to these people that come in, Lord Father, and uh, be appreciative that somebody comes into our church during the morning uh, to, to lift thy name up and meet in thy name. We thank you, Lord Father. We're able to serve them, and, and, and Lord God, and, and we're appreciative, uh, Lord Father, that you have chosen us. This is your remnant, Lord Father, and you have chosen us, Lord Father, to serve, to serve in this town. Your believers, we love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Exciting book, isn't it? Huh? It's an exciting book. Yeah, I got a very exciting watching and listening to this stuff.